Hello, today we're going to show you how to create a bar graph in Excel that has error bars. So basically this is a video to show you how to add error bars to uh, your data in Excel. So we're going to move to Excel and I have some data that I put into um, Excel already. These are data that are identical to the data I used for my hand-drawn graph a video that I posted earlier. In this uh, study, I looked at the mean scores on a test for students in my intro bio class that had already taken AP Biology in high school and those who hadn't. And I calculated their means in, um, in terms of points out of 100 and there's the variation around the mean as a standard error. And so now I put the data into three columns. My student group, this is, these are the independent data. They go in the first column. So I have students who took AP Bio and students who did not. The mean score on the test in points and my AP Bio students on average scored 84. My non-AP Bio students scored 81. And then the variation around the mean is measured by the standard error. And I, I recorded those as well. <clears throat> the students without AP Biology had more variation in their scores. Okay, now I'm going to make a bar graph. And to make a bar graph, I don't, I don't highlight, uh, let's just show you what I highlight. I highlight the in, independent data, or the independent um, variable, and the dependent variable. I don't highlight the error bars for now. Okay, and I also highlighted the titles of each column. I like to do that, some people don't. And I need a chart. I'm going to do just a simple old bar chart. So I'm going to hit bar chart, and I'll just do this kind. This looks beautiful to me. Okay, so I need to do a few things to make this bar chart in better shape. I don't like those grid lines, so I click on them and delete them. Um, I'm not sure I like the axis spread here. We'll see what happens when I add error bars. I may have to adjust that. I don't like a title, but I do need to add some X and Y axes titles. So I'm going to add those in. We're going to have to um, add those in by clicking on chart element, the plus sign, and then adding axis titles. That's just what I did. So I'm going to type in mean score on test in points. That's how I measured the score, I guess. And down here, I would say student group. Oops. Got to click on that and type in student group. I have students without AP and with AP. Maybe I want to make these <clears throat> um, font sizes a little bit bigger, and I can click on, say, the x-axis and make that instead of 10 font, let's make it 12. Maybe I want to make the y-axis also 12 to make it a little bit easier to read, okay? And now I'm going to need to add in my error bars. And to do that, I again have to go to my charts element, chart elements, and I'm going to go to error bars. But I don't just want to click on it. If I just click on it, it adds random error bars. I don't want those. I want to show the error that I have. So I can't do that. Instead, I need to click on this triangle and go to more options. Under more options, it shows like vertical error bars and I want both. I want the error above and below the mean and it um, tells me that right now it's using a fixed value. Yeah, I don't want that. I want to put in my own error bars. So I'm going to click on custom and then I need to specify the value. So I'm going to click on that and I get a little uh, box that comes up. Ugh. Wow, that really did not go well for me. <laughs> I don't know what happened. There we go. Um, and in the box, it says, I just wanted to move my box, but I, I was not happily moving this box. Positive error value and negative error value. Well, I want, for my two bars, I want the positive error uh, for the AP students to be 4.9 and 8.5 for the non-AP students. So what I will do is highlight that whole uh, that that whole column and it will enter into the positive error value. The negative error value is the same thing. I want the error to go up and down from the mean the same way. So I'm going to highlight that same column 4.9 and 8.5 for the negative error value and I'm going to hit OK. 
and I'm going to take a look. Okay, what does it look like? Does it look like this error bar is 5 and this one is more like 8.5? This one definitely is bigger. That's good. That's what I want to see. And now my axis changed a little too. It goes from 0 to 100. I'm not sure if I want it to do that. I could change that possibly um, by clicking on it and you know making the minimum say 50. Oops. Um, I want the minimum axis to be 50. Let's see if what that does. I don't know. Does it do that automatically? Yeah, it started to do that. So I started mine at 50 and went up to 95. Ooh, I would rather have it go up to 100, I think, just because, you know, it seems odd to... Ooh, I don't know where I am now. Axis options. I have no idea where how I got that in the first place, actually. I was pretty happy that I found that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm okay with this. It's not perfect, but I'm okay with it. The important thing here is I showed you how to make the error bars, and the error bars are different for each bar. They have to reflect the true error that we have. And to do that is a little tricky, but I think I think we got it. So now I would take my um, now I would take my graph and I would copy it. So I would highlight it. I would hit Control C, copy it, and I could put it into say a Word document or onto some file that you already had ready to go um, if I wanted to. All right, and that's what I would do. So thank you so much. That's all I need from from this.